Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerSportsBetting.com, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, there was talk of a fight between middleweight champion Andy Lee and former middleweight champion but still unbeaten fighter Peter Quillen. Let's talk about it. Let me first say up front, I've looked at numerous Peter Quillen fights. He's one of the most riveting people to me in the sport of boxing. I don't get him. In other words, as I'm watching him, as I'm watching his fight style, I'm puzzled. There's some dynamic I'm just missing. Right? He doesn't seem to me to have that much volume. Those are about 400 punches a fight when it goes 12 rounds, right? He doesn't have that much volume. He doesn't have that much hand speed. He's not moving. He's a hunter. I know in his last fight he moved a little bit, right? But he's really a hunter. He has a greater than 70% KO ratio, which is high, right? The one thing I have been able to figure out with Quillen, well, two things. The first is that his left hook is one of the best punches in boxing. It's a show stopper. He has a spectacular left hook. The other thing I've noticed with Quillen is, as baffled as I am, opponents are as well. He's fighting Hassan Njika, right? Hassan Endam. And Endem, of course, gets dropped multiple times in multiple rounds. And Endem is a guy who moves around the ring, right? Quillen seems to catch up with guys who aren't expecting his shots to have the force behind them that they do. He's fighting Winky Wright, great defensive fighter. And he drops Winky Wright. Winky admits he got hit hard with a punch he didn't think would have that kind of sting on it. In other words, Quillen is kind of like baseball's Mariano Rivera, right? Easy windup, real easy windup. And then suddenly, here's the pitch, and guess what? It has velocity on it. It's 95 to 100 miles an hour, right? Quillen never looks, and I mean never looks like he's winded or tired in the ring. Never! Right? Let me also say this, and I don't say it lightly. You know, we all have our quirks, we all have our eccentricities, we all have our optical illusions. Now, Quillen is from Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? He now lives in New York City, right? Brooklyn or Manhattan, I forget which one. But his personality is that of a surfer, if he were out here on the West Coast, right? Forget the manicured mustache and the hair that's always cut. Forget all that. Look at the guy. Just look at him. This is a boxer, macho sport, who has, and I'm not kidding, a smiley face tattooed on his left shoulder. Right, look at him. He's a guy who is one of the biggest punchers out there. But he's never trying to intimidate his opponent. Never. Right? You know, I don't know what to make of the guy. I'll say this too. Look at his fights. He's a chess player. He's surgical. He's not wasting shots. He's in front of you. He is hunting you down, but he's patient, right? He's not, he's not spending a lot of energy, right? He's not that fast. But yet, what he does is he gets up on you, he's studying angles, and he's able to slip that left hook in, up top or down low, 
and he's been able to handle southpaws. Winky Wright was a southpaw. Fernando Guerrero was a southpaw. Right? In fact, when you look closely at him, the way he moves, and I have no evidence of this whatsoever, other than speculation looking at films, trying to figure this guy out. He looks to me to be a southpaw fighting out of an orthodox stance. Right? Make no mistake, he's in an orthodox stance. I know in his last fight against Lucas Conisi or some name like that, I know that he threw some right hands in that fight, but his left is his money punch, right? This is kind of like a reverse Marvin Hagler, right? Here you have a southpaw and his big punch is up front. He's kind of like Oscar De La Hoya, only with more economy of motion. Also, he's not stressed out like Oscar. As I said, this guy comes across like a surfer. Right? I'm taking Peter Quillen against Andy Lee. Right? Andy Lee is a southpaw. He's a taller fighter. But Andy Lee hasn't looked good to me for some time. I thought Andy Lee looked bad against Frank Horta. I thought Andy Lee looked bad against John Jackson, a fight I thought he was losing before he got the KO. I thought the fight against Matt Karabov was competitive. I thought Karabov had his moments before Andy Lee got the KO. Understand, Andy Lee himself has a KO ratio greater than 65%. This is a match between two punchers, right? But while Kid Chocolate is the older fighter. And that's the other thing with Kid Chocolate. You look at him, he looks young, he looks playful. Then you research him and you find out he's older than you thought he was. Right? Kid Chocolate's older than Andy Lee. But there's less wear on the tire. Because for some reason, when guys fight Andy Lee, let's say when Chavez Jr. fights Andy Lee, it's rough and tumble. He's up on Andy Lee. Understand, I have never seen a Kid Chocolate fight. That was rough and tumble. I've seen active Kid Chocolate fights, the Craig McCoon fight, right? But it never gets to be rough and tumble. In other words, Kid Chocolate, for whatever reason, without superior hand speed, right? With great power in his left, right? Somehow he's able to control the pacing of the bout. Right, so if I had two bets to make, the first would be I'm leaning toward Kid Chocolate in this one. I just think he's the better boxer than Andy Lee. I think he's going to walk down Andy Lee. I think he's going to find that if he can just block Andy's left hand, and keep in mind, I privately feel this is a fight between two southpaws. If he could just block Andy's left hand, he should be able to land his own left hand, right? I also feel that for some reason, people don't want to stay in the pocket with Kid Chocolate. You need to get outside of the pocket. Now, because Andy has been hit hard in his career, I don't think Andy has the coordination these days. One man's opinion. I'm not a doctor. I don't think Andy has the coordination these days to stay outside the pocket and to use length against Kid Chocolate. So, I like Kid Chocolate to win the fight. Let me add something else. I'm expecting somebody in this fight to get a stoppage. Right? You have two guys well north of 50% in terms of KO ratio. The fight is going to go 12 rounds. Understand, Andy Lee's last three fights, in fact, let's go back. His last five fights have gone one round, two rounds, eight rounds, five rounds, and six rounds. Right? This fight's scheduled for 12. I don't expect Kid Chocolate to be on his back foot like he was in his last fight because that guy was shorter than him, had a high guard, and kept coming forward. Now he's fighting a taller fighter, and Kid Chocolate really is a hunter. He's not a guy who gets hunted. 
So I think Kid Chocolate is going to come forward. He knows. Cesar Jr. KO'd Andy Lee. He's going to feel that he can test Andy's chin. He's going to know Andy was on the verge of getting knocked out by John Jackson when he himself got the knockout. So I believe Kid Chocolate's going to go for a knockout and be on his front foot. I think Andy Lee is going to know exactly where to find Kid Chocolate. Right? Exactly where to find him. I'm expecting a stoppage here. Let me make one more point. You know, Kid Chocolate fights at 160. Right? He's 5'11". He's big for 160. Understand, he came in on fight night for his last fight weighing 179 pounds. Now, he has the kind of power. He's a big hitter. He has the kind of power that I believe would translate at 168. I think it's a matter of time before we see chocolate move up. I'll agree. There's a lot of money to be made at 160. Right? Chocolate could fight Danny Jacobs. And that fight would probably sell out to Barclay Center. No question about it. You have Janady Golovkin at middleweight. You have Miguel Cotto at middleweight. Understand, Miguel Cotto is a guy who sold out Madison Square Garden several times. Right? A kid chocolate versus Cotto fight in Madison Square Garden would get a lot of people paid. That would be a financial bonanza. Right? I also understand that 168 has a lot of risk. Bigger man. Some very skilled man. Andre Ward, James DeGale among them, right? Carl Frotch, others, right? I understand 168 has issues, right? But as you watch Peter Quillen, just understand that mentally, this guy is one of the more cerebral guys in the sport. He's a chess player, right? What I don't understand about him is how his chess game works. In other words, I know. He has the big left hook up front. I just don't understand <laughs> why guys aren't able to avoid that big left hook. You know what I mean? I I just don't get it. Keep in mind, he doesn't have the length dynamic that someone like Deontay Wilder has. Well, I consider Wilder to be a flawed fighter, right? But at least when I watch Wilder fights, I understand why Wilder's hard to hit because he's a bit away. You know what I mean? Tall guy, knows how to use length. With Kid Chocolate, he seems to be right in front of you. But clearly, there's a different dynamic in the ring. I'm expecting that unknown dynamic. And the fact that the guy, even though he's older than Andy Lee, is in much better shape and is a thinking man's fighter. Right? I'm expecting Kid Chocolate to win for those reasons. I like Kid Chocolate in this one. I'll hedge the play with, well, put it this way. I'll try to buy rounds and get, let's say, the first 10 rounds of this fight. If you're going to fool around with over-unders, and if you're going to take the under, at least try to individually purchase a few other rounds up to rounds, oh, you know, 9 or 10. Because understand, both of these fighters are patient. Right? Both of these guys, you know, no one's going to come in. Even though Kid Chocolate has KO'd nine people in the first round, right? Uh, and 18 people inside of five rounds. Just to understand, he's not a guy who runs across the ring at you. That's another enigma with this guy. He's measured in his pacing. He's taking his time. Guys just happen to fall early. So you have two guys who are going to be pacing themselves, right? Neither guy jumps on you right away even though they have early KOs, right? So this fight might linger a little bit, but I'm expecting someone to get stopped in this fight. If I had a gun to my head and had to pick a winner, I would pick Kid Chocolate. That's how I see it. Tell us how you see it. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Maybe I'm wrong about Andy Lee. But it seems to me that it wasn't so long ago that Andy Lee was talking about losing weight to fight at 154 to prolong his career. Even Andy Lee seemed to understand that he was getting hit too hard at 160. Now, 
he'll be entering the ring against one of the division's hardest punchers. I like Kid Chocolate. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.